Hi everybody, welcome to another Torbman's Live Colour event. My name is Fiona, I'm the Torbman's Colour Specialist and we are here tonight to talk all things colour amongst other things. So I'll let you know how we um, roll with our sessions. For the first half an hour I will be um, on screen um, talking about a topic of choice and available to answer all of your questions around colour. Um, certainly if you're embarking on a project and you'd like some advice, um, you've come to the right place. And if you'd like to know about our wonderful portfolio of um, products that we have available to help protect and beautify your space, we can certainly help you with that as well. So before I begin, um, I'd just like to apologise that we had an event organised um, for what we thought was this evening, but the time was wrong, so it actually took place at four o'clock, unbeknownst to myself. So anybody that did register for the event, I do apologise if it is only now that you are seeing this event. Um, so before I begin, and tonight's all about exteriors, and I'm going to take you on a little bit of a journey, but I'll start with um, what, I've, what I've experienced. I started my, um, say, last week, and on the weekend I was lucky enough to attend the Sydney Design Show. And we had a fantastic stand where we were um, showcasing Colorsmith and the interest and hype around Colorsmith was amazing. Um, and it was fantastic to be able to have a walk around and really um, be able to see what's happening with trends um, from other suppliers, etc. And the amount of color that is being used, um, primarily I'll talk about interiors for a moment, whether it be um, concrete colored basins like your sinks, um, beautiful, beautiful tiles with oh, the most spectacular colours and I was lucky enough to be able to, whilst I was there, have a play with some of the samples, creating some colours with Colorsmith. So if there is anybody from the design show that we managed to talk to while we were there, um, I do, and you're joining us tonight for the first time, I do say hi, welcome. Um, so that wraps that up, but as I said, we're talking about exteriors tonight and a lot of questions that I am asked about is, um, you know, people are wanting to know where to put colour and how to um, colour up different substrates um, and different areas. So I thought I'd take you on a little bit of a, a journey through that. And I've also drawn up um, just a basic elevation of an exterior where I will show you the, um, the power of colour, if you like, and what you can do with colour and how you can make your space um, the exterior sort of aesthetically pleasing um, and also I'm going to show you how because a lot of questions that I am asked because people are there's so many people out there still embarking on new builds and there are still so many people embarking on renovations and so when we talk about renovating sometimes you have to work with what you have and it's not that easy to go and replace windows etc etc so I'm going to show you how to create a color from an existing window color and then show you how you can build a color scheme from that. So as I said, it's a little bit of a journey and we'll, we'll sort of go through it as we go tonight. But please, while I'm here, certainly do upload any questions that you do have in regards to um, products, projects, color. And if you do have any images that you're wanting me to have a look at um, to help you, you know, color up the space, so to speak, if you can hold off um, uploading those until we finish streaming um, while we're live, you are un unable to upload any images. But once we finish um, half an hour being live, we stay back behind the scenes, if you like, off the camera, but still online to um, answer further questions. So there's an opportunity there to then post your photos. Okay, so I'm going to talk you through building a color scheme and talking about exteriors. So the way I work, and this has um, served me very well, and I like to explain this when I am in store um, with consumers, is if you are building and you are starting to look for um, colors and then you know building your um, building a color scheme from something, I recommend going out and having a look at roof colors and deciding whether you like dark or light. It's a really great place to start. And then when I talk about interiors, as you would have heard me talk about before, um, if you're embarking on building or you're renovating, you could be gutting your house out and you're starting and you wonder where to start, go and find your flooring, 
that or, or even a tile that you're going to use in that space. And again, we can build a color scheme from that. Uh, okay, so I have my first question. So I'll, I'll quickly answer that and then I'll come back and take you through what I'm gonna take you through. So hi, um, Lane or Laney, I hope I'm saying your name correctly. I do apologize if I'm not. The first question is, hi, I'm in the midst of a big reno. My kitchen cabinets will be Polytech Blossom White with frozen terra bench tops and Tasmanian oak wood accents. What white would you suggest to paint my walls in this open space? Immediately, um, having had a play around before with your Polytech Blossom, etc., I would suggest looking at Torbman's Crisp White. It is a white that has just a splash of um, raw umber and when you look at raw umber when you look at the tint it is a murky sort of brown I know that doesn't sound enticing but when the tint is put into something like your Torbman's Endure you end up with a very soft glow to the walls and I know when you're talking about using it with the um, Polytech Blossom White and also your Tasmanian Oak I know it's going to sit with that extremely well so have a look at Torbman's Crisp White what I do recommend though and I say this at every session is you cannot uh, beat sampling the color and the way to do this is going to your local hardware store so perhaps hop into Bunnings and when they receive their paint they will have what we call palette liners so big cardboard pieces that line the palette or line between the paint cans if you can get yourself one of those you want to have at least a meter by a meter square of cardboard and what I suggest you do is get yourself a sample pot brush three coats of your sample pot onto the piece of cardboard and then within your space, move the cardboard around. Now there's two areas that I suggest. And one is right up near um, the ceiling. So where the wall meets the ceiling is where you're going to put your piece of painted cardboard, obviously once it's dry. And have a look under natural light and also have a look under artificial lighting. So artificial lighting being your night lights, etc. And then also the other place to view your color is down near the floor and again in natural light and also in artificial lighting and pay particular attention to how the color is going to um, sit within the environment and how it's going to work with your floor coloring etc i think it's um that's what i would recommend and i know um when you're renovating etc it can be hard but if you are able to get some of the samples that are going to sit within your space um, and it might be a piece of flooring, etc. And then putting up your um, piece of painted cardboard, it's going to give you a really good indication of how that color is going to work within your space. And also put it into areas where you're not getting a lot of natural light and you'll see how the color will work. That's what I would suggest. Thank you. Do I have any more questions coming through here? Not at this point. All right, I will continue. Okie dokie, so the next thing, so I talk about when we are um, embarking on an exterior colour journey and you're starting out, um, have a look at your roof colour, decide on whether you want a dark or a light roof. And if you are um, building, that's obviously very apparent. If you are renovating, sometimes we have to work with what we have, but it's still important to have a look and see whether your roof is dark or light. Now, when we're building, and if you are renovating and have the ability to either replace the windows or paint your windows, I find that the roof color, your window color, and certainly any, um, you might have some, um, some doors, you know, some glass doors, frame doors, etc., and also your garage door. If you keep those the same color, and you're generally selecting from a small color palette. And I might be talking about something within the, um, the color bond range. If you keep them all the same color, it gives you a world of opportunity when you start playing with colors outside. You are able to um, introduce other colors. When you have an exterior that perhaps has, let me say, you might have a dark roof and then your guttering may be another color, and then your windows may be another color, and then your garage door. And I've seen this so many times. It's very hard then to find the right tone that you're going to paint the exterior of the dwelling in. 
Um, and it's also very hard later on down the track if you're wanting to, because they say the rule of thumb seems to be the trend that everybody paints around about every seven years. I wish that were the case for me. I seem to do it a lot more. But every seven years, people tend to change their um, color schemes. So if you have a lot of elements that are already a lot of different colors, it makes it hard to then choose an overall color for the dwelling. So take that into consideration. I do want to, it looks like I might have another question here. Okie dokie. I'll just finish this and then I'll come back and ask a few, um, answer some questions. I've got a, quite a few coming through. Just quickly, I just want to show you, let me just see. Okay, I'm, I'm going to take you quickly to um, my laptop. Beautiful, I'll pop myself up in the corner. Yep, it's worked, fantastic, something's working, fantastic. Right, here's a very quick elevation that I drew up to show you to represent um, an exterior. Now, if you look here, we seem to have, uh, oh, the roof is black followed by guttering, which seems to be quite a warm, almost pink toned gray. The garage door itself is um, a gray, a bluey sort of gray. The windows are white and then the overall color um, on the majority of the dwelling is a, well, it depends what you're seeing on the screen or what you're seeing from at home, but it's a very soft gray sort of blue. So there's quite a lot happening within this space. Um, and for me, I look at it and it's like, oh, there's too much. I think it needs to be sort of pared back a little bit. So I want to show you very quickly because I'm very mindful of the questions that we have happening here. Let me just see if I can find something that I prepared earlier. It's always the way when you're under the pump and you can't find what you need. Here we go. So I'm going to show you if I were to have the windows, the roof and the garage door, as we can see here, all the one color, all of a sudden the exterior of that home looks a lot more balanced it's calmer there's not um, there's less sort of colors trying to interact with each other and there's a lot less happening and you know you drive past that and to me I go you know that looks quite nice so just by changing or having as I keep saying your roof your guttering your windows and your garage door the same color I think you can achieve an overall um, really beautiful color palette color scheme because it allows you to now play with the color that you want to put sort of on your walls and you know what you can also introduce a color to your front door so that's just a quick representation just to show you I'm going to come back on screen and then I'll show you some images after where I've put together some color palettes so I do have a few questions here so let me see what I have here okay Beautiful. So, hi Hannah, thank you very much for joining our session tonight. Sorry, I was just pausing there while I have a quick read. So you're saying we are needing some color advice on painting the exterior and roof of our house. Is there a way to upload a photo? There certainly is. If you can just hold off until we finish streaming, which will be in about 15 minutes, um, and then you can pop it into this feed where you've just put your question in and I will then be able to see the image and then I can certainly um, offer some suggestions. At this point, while we're streaming, unfortunately, um, you're not able to upload any images. So I do apologize about that. That's just the way this technology works. Um, but certainly send your image through um, once we finish streaming. And certainly if you do have any questions that you're wanting to um, relate with the image, pop those in the feed as well. And I will, um, once we finish streaming, answer them for you. Thanks. Okay, so thank you. So Lainey is um, back, you have another question. I have a shale gray roof and want white trims and a pastel mint green for the exterior. Any advice for that? All right, let me just, let's get some um, colors happening here. So any advice, look, you could create your own mint green, that's for sure. I tend to, um, every second question when I am in store, um, revolves around greens. Greens seem to be very much um, 
an on-trend thing and I keep using the phrase, you know, it's the age of sage and it certainly is. And I can certainly tell you that when I was um, in Sydney, the amount of beautiful um, green baths and basins um, and tiles were just superb because I too have a love of green. I'm sure that most people that join us know that from the amount of greens that I tend to use. Okay, so I'm guessing um, how much, Lainey, do you want? How intense are you wanting your colour? So I know you're saying a pastel mint green. Do you want quite a bit of, I know pastel can vary. Are you wanting quite, um, do you want it really diluted out or are you wanting to have a bit of colour? Because I guess when you put colour um, outside, it does tend to, even if you're using whites or using soft pastel tones, they tend to, when I say bleach out from the sun, they lose a bit of their intensity. So that's something to consider. Um, oh, there is a beautiful green and it's called Dashing Green that sits very nicely with um, shale grey. I'm just making sure I have the right tone. I don't know whether, I'll see whether I can get it up on screen for you. Just bear with me. Oh, let me see. And also bear in mind that when you look at my screen, it's not always going to, um, looks like we're, okay, here we go. It looks like we're having a moment technology today. We've had some amazing storms tonight, so I'm sure that it's possibly affecti affecting my Wi-Fi. So I do apologize if there's any lag. Okay, here we go. So I'll bring my computer up, my laptop, sorry. I'll pop myself up in the corner. Beautiful. So this is a stunning soft pastel mint green called Dashing Green. And when I hold it up against um, shale grey, they sing together. Now, if you are looking and you're wanting to view this, the best place to find colour, and I'm going to show you very quickly, is if you go to um, www.torbmans.com com.au and then where it says colors if you select paint colors and i'll hope this works and we go down you'll see that here all of the colors are grouped by family making it extremely easy to shop if you want to go a little bit further and you scroll right down it will take you to the order color swatches now i use this side a lot because back up here where we can see the colors. It doesn't necessarily have every single uh, Torbman's color available, but I can assure you that when you scroll right down here, you can search for colors. So this is where you go. And I'll, I'll just go in and show you how I did it actually. And if I go down, go in here and type in the color that I'm looking for, here we go. It seems to be a little bit slow. I'm hoping you can still see this. Well, maybe I'll go back to that. That's where you type it in, right here where the search function is, and you can see the color here. And I'll view the color detail so you can see it in a larger span. Something like that is definitely um, worth, a, worth a visit. Again, I would certainly recommend sampling this because as I mentioned before, when we talk about putting colors outside, it's certainly going to be affected by sun and it will tend to bleach out. So have a look at that, pop that up against your, I'm just going to find your white that I know that's going to work really well with that color scheme together. Let me see. You could, depending on how much white and where you're going to use the white. So when I talk about whites for exteriors, I'll come back on screen. Okay, when we talk about whites for exteriors, there's something to be very mindful of. And it's the amount of tint that goes into the whites as such. And the best way when you are shopping for white is to have a look at what is called the LRV, which is the light reflectance value. Because when color goes out, and particularly whites, when you put it out into um, full sun, it will dilute out. And so it's better to have a white that has a little bit of tint or a little bit of substance so that when you're sitting outside and having your morning cup of tea, you're not blinded by your white and you need your sunglasses first thing in the morning. That's not pleasant. So depending on how much white or where you're wanting to use the white, if it's just for trims and it's to offset 
um, the green and we're just talking about using white for the um, window surrounds etc you could use Torman's brilliant white it's a beautiful bright white and that's going to offset dashing green um, perfectly um, so have a look at brilliant white have a look at dashing green if that's not um, what you had imagined certainly pop some more um, questions into the feed and I'll be more than happy to um, expand on that for you and you know what if you were to put beautiful soft pink with that you would have a fantastic looking color scheme anyhow I'll, I'll move on so uh, what do we have here Corinne thank you very much for joining our session tonight so looking at an exterior of cotton sheets cladding Salinger render render sorry um, basalt roof and garage basalt gutters and surf mist fascias and admir I can't even say my words tonight and Admiralty door do you think this scheme is cohesive let me just have a look for you so we've got cotton sheets cladding to me it sounds like it is I can imagine all of these colors together uh, where are we I guess the only thing to be mindful of is is the cladding going to be in um, full sun because cotton sheets doesn't have an it doesn't have a huge amount of tint to um, to create that color so I would certainly recommend try as I'm talking and I know I bang on about this trialing the color on a large piece of cardboard and yes Natalie your question does cardboard offer a good representation of the paint look it does what we're looking at when we're trialing or sampling a color is we are paying particular attention to how the color is going to perform within its environment so that's why I say to get yourself a piece of cardboard look you could get yourself a piece of plasterboard they do um, sell um, plaster patch panels and I think they're around about um, maybe 570 by 570 and I mean you know we're looking at about something like that but I think that when we're talking about sampling colors for um, exterior interior and to really get a true indication of how the color is going to perform for you a meter by a meter is a really good size to begin with so let me just continue on so I've got Salinger here sorry you can't see what I'm doing because I'm looking at a fan deck everybody but I'm looking at Salinger I am looking at oh, surf mist beautiful um, cotton sheets cladding yes and then basalt I've just got basalt which is here's our basalt I think that is beautiful I think it works extremely well um, I think you're on a winner there the only thing that I would suggest is to ensure that you sample the white that's my only um, recommendation but other than that I think you've got a lovely color scheme there thank you uh, okay so hi Mel thank you very much for joining our session so you're wanting to paint we I'm wanting to paint our bedroom a nice light gray with a white trim that looks fresh but not too dark of a gray that looks blue any suggestions so let me just get this right a nice light gray not too dark so can you just clarify for me unless I'm not reading this right are you wanting a blue undertone or you're not wanting a blue undertone if you come back to me I'll be happy to give you many suggestions so I'll just wait until you come back with that Mel thank you very much um, I'll continue on with this very quickly so what I want to show you is and I'm going to now let me take you to my iPad let's see if I can pop that up in the corner and pop myself up in the corner beautiful so back on talking about exterior color schemes very quickly so I've put together some schemes because I'm constantly asked about what sort of colors go with um, popular color bond colors so I thought I would do this for this evening and so I'm starting with um, June color bond June a beautiful warm uh, gray if you like almost almost going on to a slight gray and I on this um, 
elevation you can see there I've used some beautiful tones that sit I think extremely well do bear in mind that we are looking at um, a computer screen with colors so always recommend if you're liking what you see here certainly again sample potting it but as you can see here we have um, color bond June I also have I need to look at what I put here um, wisp of smoke and then private jet and for a white to hear a white now really important and this is a question that I get asked quite a lot as well what color do we do our eaves and what color do we or eaves or suffetes and I was actually asked you know should I paint them really dark so think about this so they generally sit you know they, they might be coming out from your um, an extension of your roof line you know it's the under part here if you like it might be in um, it's a feed or you might be a portico that sits over the um, over your front door etc so that particular area does not actually receive direct sunlight so you want to keep it light so that when you switch on the lights of a night outside you've got some light that's reflecting it's not just being absorbed so I always recommend using a, a very soft white um, you could in this instance use brilliant white which is straight white with no tint if you like um, I do like adding um, a little bit of tint so that I know that when I put all of the colors together, you know, that they're all sitting side by side and they generally sing. So for the white here with this um, color selection, I've put Tahira White. And you can see in the elevations, we've shown a light um, facade and then the darker facade, but I think both of them work extremely well. So there's one selection there. And once I finish streaming, I'll pop them up into the feed. Okay, the next one, and I love this. So I'm always asked about what can I put with Surf Mist? And, and we get asked a lot about Hamptons, etc. And, you know, one of my go-tos is a beautiful color called Torgman's Oyster Bar. But I thought, you know, I'm going to step out of my comfort zone. And I've used two um, colors, as you can see, there that are very similar. They're not dissimilar. You've got a darker variance at the top and then a lighter variance down below. But because we've used surf mist and we've used it on the roof guttering fascia garage door and also windows it's given us a neutral where we can actually inject color so for this one i have used um, baritone which is the darker um, of the tones up on the top and then the image below has november rains and for the white i've used crisp white and again if you're in a coastal environment these colors work extremely well and I live um, not far from the coast and on my morning drive sometimes when I'm heading to um, visit stores etc there are a couple of houses that sit side by side that look not dissimilar to this and I am drawn to them and I admire them I think they look fantastic so I sort of thought I'm going to replicate that tonight for you I'm also going to show you oops let me just see if I can get the next one. Monument. Monument is a color that is um, loved by many and a lot of people love to put grays with monument and I think that they do work extremely well together. So for this instance, as you can see here, we've gone for a darker gray on the bottom image and on the top image, a lighter gray offset with um, soft white for use of it. so south pole we're using for this effects and then there is also um, thundercloud and platinum gray so a couple of grays that sit extremely well with monument now i do want to um, show you something else i'm not sure i'm going to have enough time so i'll quickly run through it if i can do it showing you from this image okay so i talked about before that if you are renovating and you have to work with what you've got and a lot of people do and i understand that replacing big ticket items like windows is not always desirable and not everybody wants to paint them because of the work associated with doing that so what i have done is i have scanned a window color which is not too dissimilar to june I have created a color and from that I have created two color palettes so the way I did it was I scanned the window created the color 
Then I've leveraged the functionality of the Colorsmith app and I have looked at combinations and from that I've taken four colors out of combinations. So you can see a um, darker tone and also the green. The green is on the front door and the darker tone is on the top elevation. I think it sings, it looks fantastic. And then below, I've used a lighter tone, which I've taken out of combinations again, along with a soft pink um, for a front door, which looks fantastic. So it's extremely easy when you're not sure of how to create a color scheme, um, use Colorsmith. And I did use it, um, I did use, sorry, the Colorsmith reader tonight, but I've ran out of time to take you through it. If you're wanting to know how I use the reader, um, certainly we have all of our videos uploaded onto our um, Facebook page and generally every week I talk about Colorsmith and I'm pretty sure that not last week but the week before when I was showing you how you create a color from a tile um, I did use the reader so it will talk you through how to do it but again next week I'll be uh, again back on board to show you how to use it. Um, and I will, once we hop off screen in a moment, continue on because there's a few more questions coming through. So again, thank you everybody for joining our session tonight. And I do apologize about the mix-up of us starting early. Um, look forward to um, answering any further questions because I will be uh, behind the um, computer for the next half an hour or so. And also I look forward to um, seeing you all again here next week, same time, same place. Until then, have a fantastic week. Stay safe and happy painting everybody. Bye.